I'm Willem Rosenberg. I'm an associate professor of biological sciences at Ohio University in Athens, Ohio. This is the end of our 2008 field season. My lifelong career has become the steward of diamondback terrapins in the state of Maryland. I'm involved in the project on Poplar Island because there are a large number of turtles nesting there. My job is to, um, to keep track of the number of turtles that are on the island. One of the ideas that's sort of floating around in my head is what is the importance of these island habitats that we have throughout Chesapeake Bay? Uh, with regard to the general health of terrapin populations throughout the bay. Usually around Memorial Day weekend, the females will start coming ashore to lay eggs. Okay, let's keep an eye out for hatchling tracks and see what we can find. The major predators are raccoons and foxes. Oh, here's some hatchling tracks. The really neat let's thing about a... Poplar Island is that there are no nest predators out there. All right. So and when we do find a terrapin nest, nest and we will actually dig up that nest uh, and the first thing we do is we look at the eggs that are inside that nest and then um, mark it so that we can relocate that nest in about 50 days. 793 West, waypoint number 218. There are so few nests that survive the raccoons and the and the nest predators. Poplar truly presents a unique opportunity to learn a great deal about a life cycle yeah. which otherwise is very difficult to study because of nest predation. Okay, oh, here's a nest with babies in it. Let's uh, get them out. Much of what I've learned about the nesting biology of terrapins has occurred in the last five years there. of my work. Okay. So. Bag, um, let me just do a quick little check here. Okay, looks so good. So at the 50 day point, we make a ring out of aluminum flashing. The purpose of the ring is simply to catch the hatchlings when they come out and to prevent them from escaping. And then once that ring is in place, every day, hopefully twice a day, we Here's check that nest track. to see if the hatchlings are emerged. Let's keep an eye out for hatchlings along the fence, especially and um, of course we're checking the rings to see if we can find any baby turtles inside of them. Looking, 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 constantly looking. Once we've caught the hatchlings, bring them back to our lab. Okay, so um, these are little hatchlings that have um, emerged from Poplar Island in uh, the last few days. Um, one of the things, of course, is they're incredibly small, about the size of a quarter. We also take uh, the same series of measurements that we take everywhere else. 25, 25.2. We also put a little skewt notch. We tag them using a small binary coated wire tag and we inject it into the right rear leg. As a consequence of having this tag, when we recapture these animals, we will be able to identify and distinguish all turtles that come from Poplar Island. We hold the animals for 24 hours here just to make sure that they haven't lost that little coated wire tag and then um, after 24 hours the animals are released into the wild. So these little guys will be um, making their way into the salt marsh here. Yeah, it's not just me. If you think about turtles and the fact that longevity is really important, 
and a female's just got to make it through a couple of those predator cycles to, to successfully reproduce, then you know, it may be that these islands are really important and becoming more important. He doesn't want to go. He doesn't want to go. <laughs> okay, guys, have fun. So hopefully we'll see these guys in a few years.